Thank you for joining us. We are going to scan a not really nice 40 year old gentleman who's coming to the ICU after a syncopal episode, but he's got a past medical history of the transposition of the great arteries that happened when he was a baby. To try and demonstrate this pathology, we're going to use this app called Heartpedia. It's a free downloadable app from Cincinnati Children's. And here you can see you've got a, all the different types of sort of standard congenital heart disease that you can see here. And the one that we're going to have a look at will be the transposition of the great arteries. We first of all, just by having a look at normals, uh, I'm going to take off the labels and you can see to here the normal anatomy of the heart. In particular, I want you to take a uh, look at where the main pulmonary trunk comes off and where the uh, aorta, which sits behind the pulmonary artery. Now, if we then uh, look at the transposition of the great arteries, you'll see that those two are separated from each other now. So that you've got the aorta that sits at the front and the pulmonary artery that sits behind. A nice way to have a look at this from an echo point of view is to try and get a short axis of the, uh, of the, heart, uh, ch uh, the heart valves here. And here at the front, you can see the aorta and behind you can sit the pulmonary valve. And they're almost in uh, sort of the same plane as each other and that's one of the key features that you can get on echo is that you can see the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the aortic valve are in the same plane as each other and that is obviously not the same when we now stick here if we have a look at the normal anatomy and you can see that the aorta and the pulmonary artery are in different planes to each other. Uh, so that is normal with the pulmonary artery in front of the aorta in different planes from each other and now look at the defects and you see the aortic valve at the front with the pulmonary artery at the front. Uh, sorry, with the aortic valve at the front of the pulmonary artery behind. If we split those out so you can see where the right ventricle is now leading into the aorta through that aortic valve. I'll take that off and I'll show you again just the external. So that right ventricle sitting at the front. If we unfurl that, we can now see the aortic valve leading into the aorta. If we look at the left ventricle side, that left ventricle is leading through that pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery. So uh, thank goodness Emma is scanning this patient and Emma is going to try and give us a, an overview of how we can try and uh, elucidate some of the anatomy and how we can start trying to uh, sort of piece together exactly what the anatomy is. So thank you very much Emma for helping us out today. Yes, a big preface to that is that this is con adult congenital heart disease for intensivists. Yes. All right, so this is going to be pretty basic but we'll cover some of the, the main things. So generally with any adult congenital heart we start off in the subcostal and we want to check for situs. Um, essentially making sure that there's visceral, the viscera are all on the correct side of the body. So we've got the liver on the right side of the patient and then we've got aorta and IVC next to that. And then what we can do that's in short axis and we can fan through and essentially try and find that the great vessel, like the, you know, the IVC is draining into the right atrium and that that's got the hepatic vein connected to it, which we can see nice. there. Um, so that's a good check to do. So we'll just sort of fan through that and make sure we're happy with that anatomy and it's going into the right atrium. So the IVC size and all of that is important, especially when we're looking at the systemic baffle, um, which we'll talk about when we go through his anatomy. Nice. And I'm just going to sort of tilt, tilt a little bit medially, um, as we often do, to try and get the aorta um, in long axis, which you can see there. And what we would do here is just, you know, sort of uh, reduce the depth on that, put some colour on that. We should see nice, normal you know, pulsatile flow, um, and we can put our pulse wave Doppler in that and just checking that we haven't got things like a coarctation, um, which would be important to look yeah, at. Yes, and the coarctation would then show some of that diastolic prolonged flow that we'd see in there that they love putting into the ASC exams, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that all looks pretty normal. And then I'm just going to move on to the like, parasternal views now. You know, we had a little bit of information for this patient in that we know that he has, he was a DTGA. Um, and actually had an, an atrial switch, so a mustard procedure, okay. um, which means that he has um, AV concordance, but he's still got discordance between his ventricles and his great vessels. Got it. Okay, so what we can see, the first thing to recognise is this parasternal long axis looks 
obviously highly abnormal to what we're used to. Yeah. Um, and what we have here, where this is our morphological left ventricle, mm -hmm. which is actually our sub pulmonic ventricle. Fantastic. Because so you, when you're talking about the left ventricle and right ventricle, maybe it's often better to talk about them of what is like grown as a, a left ventricle, as the morphological left ventricle, yes. and then you're going to talk about what it then going to, which makes it either a systemic or a pulmonary ventricle. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Yes. So th this is the morphological left ventricle, but it is the subpulmonic or the pulmonic ventricle. It is emptying into the RV outflow tract and essentially the the P, you know, the, the pulmonary the valve. Pulmonary, yes, yeah, so the pulmonary yes, tract. The pulmonary tract. Of course, the other thing to note now is, you know, in where our usual right ventricular outflow tract would be, we still have got the morphological right ventricular outflow tract, yeah. but this is now the systemic outflow tract. This is the um, systemic ventricle that is emptying into the aorta and the, and the system. And Which the we can see just coming up. But now I'm just going to tilt down and we can now see the morphological tricuspid, ventric uh, 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 tricuspid valve, which is mildly prolapsing. And then the pressures that we would expect to see from this is obviously not our pulmonary pressures, it's our systemic pressures, right? So let's see how that matches up to his systolic blood pressure there. So if I can just line up that as we normally would do, um, lining up that colour jet with continuous wave Doppler, we're going to uh, put the baseline up. Um, so if we now measure this, that's not the best trace, but it will give us, we just put a point here, so it's our Bernoulli. So we've got pressures of pressure gradient of around 66. We add on to that an estimated left atrial pressure. Yep. Um, so, I don't know, 10, 15. And that should give us approximately what his systolic blood pressure would be. Nice. Um, but we're not, we're not capturing we're probably it probably underestimating it, because yeah, yeah, yeah. his systolic blood pressure is 136. It's an, it's an incomplete envelope, so we'll try and get that better. But um, important to recognise that when you're looking at that TR jet, that is not your pulmonary hypertension. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a, I guess, a key that's thing. That's just systemic pressures. That's just yeah. systemic pressures. Um, then coming to the, you know, round and short axis. So this is our morphological LV, or our pulmonic ventricle now. Um, it's generally crescentric in shape because we've got that systemic ventricle. Um, just like your RV is normally crescentric wrapped around your LV, it's the opposite <laughs> in, in this. Um, and sometimes you can get nice views just to confirm that this is definitely the morphological LV that has become the pulmonic LV by looking at the mitral valve and checking that it's bileaflet. Bileaflet rather than yeah. um, And then obviously we can see um, this systemic uh, right you know, the systemic ventricle, which is, um, you're getting, uh, you know, push, pushing across of that septum in systole, um, and it's bouncing back in diastole. Because it's a pressure overloaded morphological pressure. right ventricle, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly right. Now, if that left ventricle or pulmonic ventricle was dilated and bigger than the systemic RV, you've got to be worried no, that the problem. patient is yeah. developing pulmonary hypertension. Yeah, um, and Eisenmenger's syndrome and Eisenmenger's physiology exactly, is all which, start punching yeah, into which it. could be a problem. So you just want us to look through that. And then what we can do is tilt up towards the, um, which is the systemic, systemic. systemic aflo. So this is our, um, you know, uh, aortic valve, valve. Um, aorta, and then we'll put color through that, looking for any, you know, bad regurgitation. Um, we can sort of go through that and we can see what the, I guess, what the, you know, estimate cardiac output and things through that, doing our usual things, cursor behind here, pulse wave doppler. But what we would normally do on here, of course, is, you know, measure things like axel time, which isn't, you know, really validated now, because hey, this is our systemic, systemic flow. I just can show us the apical views and just talk to me again, if you can give me some tips and tricks about how to differentiate between the RV and LV in your apical views. Yeah, nice. All right, so um, a few things to look at here. So I guess the first thing, you know, differentiating between what's the morphological ventricles and things that you can look for that. So the way that we know that this is the morphological right ventricle, which is now this systemic ventricle, is we can see an apically displaced tricuspid valve. You see how it's apically displaced compared to your 
mitral valve in your LV, that's one thing. The other thing would be looking at um, trying to see if there's a moderator band, which I think we can see just there as well. So that's how we know that that's the morphological right ventricle, which is obviously now acting as the systemic ventricle. And I guess what we can notice from this, which again is a complication that we worry about with TGAs after an atrial switch, is, is right ventricular dysfunction. Yeah, sure. And we can appreciate just visually inspecting that, that it looks so. So this is our pulmonic ventricle, morphological left ventricle. Um, the things to now look for are to try and assess the baffles, because one of the you know, one of the main complications that we worry about in this mustard procedure or sending procedure with the baffles that are going across, you've got your systemic baffle, which is, which is essentially bringing venous blood from your IVC, SVC, into deoxygenated blood, yeah. right, into your left atrium, which is then going to go through the lungs. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got your, um, your systemic baffle, which is now your pulmonary venous flow, yes. which is being baffled into your you know, right, right atrium, atrium or systemic, systemic ventricle, systemic ventricle yeah. um, which is oxygenated blood, got which it. is going to go through. So you can see here, in the, and the problem with um, imaging them with TTE is that they're often, you know, in the far field. But this is what we can. Uh, this and is what, it's also in the in the sort of transverse plane. To, it's to, not in the axial to, plane. So yeah, the, exactly. So the only way you can really assess them then is in the subcostal view. Subcostals are. Yeah. Are good for some of it, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm really not an expert hard, in right? looking at these. I would definitely be calling a friend and lo looking at this. But this is the, yeah, we'll this is that, the, yeah. um, you know, the baffle, which is bringing pulmonary venous flow into the systemic ventricle. And one of the things we've got to be worried about with the baffles is obviously if there are things like syncopal episodes, we make sure that there are no clots in there and we make sure the flow is adequate. Definitely. You know, this is. Uh, you know, low flow states of uh, where surgery has happened, we need to make sure the baffles are patent and they and you have clear, nice laminar flow like we can see here, right? Yeah, you're not getting the best focus as you're saying yeah, that it's sure. seen as perpendicular in this one. But yeah, you want to absolutely look for evidence of obstruction. So with 2D, looking for you know clots and thrombus and things sat in there, um, and but also leaks. They can also leak. That's a really important thing to look for as well as obstruction. So baffle leaks and obstructions um, are definitely something that you want to be interrogating yeah. for. Um, so of course we can then try and get our pulmonic um, outflow tract here as well. Yeah. And then we can assess here for, you know, at, at pulse wave Doppler measuring our axel time, looking for evidence of pulmonary hypertension. Sure. And then we can use the MR jet to estimate like we would with the TR jet, pulmonary pressure. Do you mind then really quickly just showing me about that uh, pulmonary, uh, the pulmonic side and just showing me how you do an, you know, the RVOT or it's, it's yeah. the RVOT, yeah. the, the pulmonic outflow tract. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just tilting VTI up. And the, so I'm just tilting up to get that pulmonic yeah. uh, view uh, valve there. I'm going to pop some colour on that. Put the scale back up. You can see a little bit of PR probably just coming back there. And then I'm just trying to line up as best mm. I can. Probably I need a, a different window. Um, and again, looking for that closing click. I'm probably too far close to the valve. See how I'm getting an opening click as well? Yeah. So what we can see here, Sam, is that, um, you know, the baffle from your IVC and S... Sorry. The baffle from your SVC and IVC... Um, you know, deoxygenated blood coming into this left atrium. Yeah, and you can and, see there's no pulmonic. communication there with the, I guess, the right atrium or the systemic atrium. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just pop some colour on that. Again, just looking for laminar flow. And you can turn the scale down to what you would normally do for venous flow, right? So then you can put, you know, do pulse wave Doppler through that as well. Because you would see flows that, um, you know, may be less than a one metre per second or something and that they return to baseline. If you're seeing continuous flow through that, um, you would worry about obstruction. I understand, thank you. Um, but again, I, you know, that's... Um, and again, you just sort of follow it up with 2D, popping colour on, um, just looking for any awful turbulence, anything that looks like brisk sort of, you know, arterial flow. Um, to suggest that you could be dealing with obstruction. And we're not seeing that, but we're not getting perfect views of the baffle. And this is the limitation, obviously, of our skill set as well as PTE. Yeah. But the other thing that you can look for, of course, if you're going to have obstruction, if you're going to have obstruction down here in one of the baffles, you're going to see the upstream effect of that, which is going to be a big plethoric IVC, which is what we were saying at the beginning. And, you know, this chaps is, is you know, collapsing, which yeah. is all in keeping with that, that particular baffle not being obstructed. All right. Um, 
Emma, thanks very much. Maybe just in conclusion, I can say again how important it is to, you know, this is not a tutorial about how to manage adult congenital heart disease patients by your own. This is maybe as an introduction to try and persuade people if they're looking after patients with growing up congenital heart disease that we are looking at their previous history, we are looking at their previous echoes, we are talking with their cardiologists and their experts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these patients are lost to follow up, but then even more important, I guess, to re-engage them with the experts and centres that look after these patients in larger volumes and they are absolutely VIPs and trying to understand what their baseline physiology is and their normal parameters are, that's also the part of key to looking after these patients, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely, you, you need to have that. And then, uh, then just a general basic understanding about um, uh, yeah, about the connections yeah. with the, the veins, the arteries to the ventricles. So whether you've got atrial ventricular concordance or mm -hmm. discordance and whether you've got ventricular um, arterial concordance or discordance. And the way that they're situated in the body, which is why you look at the, the way they're next door, the sinus inversus or not, when you look at exactly. their liver versus Looking for situs as well. So start in the subcostal views and then work your way up in a standard parameter and try yeah. and get the anatomy together. And it's key to be, especially because we're not expert in this book, to really to be systematic mm. and just sort of um, go through you know what is connected to what and try and figure that out and put the sort of jigsaw puzzle together but um, yeah absolutely key all, all the prerequisites that you said there are essential and you can't look at this in isolation. Amazing. Emma thank you very much indeed and just thanks again to the patient that's really really kind of you to let us do this film thank you very much.